Hey, it's Tableau. A couple days ago, I posted something on subtle Asian traits, because I think you guys are funny. I decided to do an AMA, and the response was unbelievable. Thank you to everyone that left a comment, asked a question, tagged a friend, and especially this guy. Let's get to it. Caitlin Tran asks me, what's your favorite Pokemon? Do you even have to ask? Uh, by the way, I had a lot to drink last night, so I thought it was the perfect time to be answering these questions. Um, but damn, I need coffee. I need coffee! Eugene Kim, what's the strangest thing Haru has ever said? Well, the strangest thing would be uh, when she was like three, I think, she said to me um, in her past life, she was a dolphin. She was a pink dolphin. And that is the reason why she uh, is so drawn to dolphins. But she was very serious about it. I don't really know what to think about like past lives and stuff like that, but she says she was a dolphin. Jessica too, with the truly important question. If you had to choose between Pocky or Bubble Tea, which would it be? Uh, whatever I say, half the people are gonna love me and half the people are gonna, like, just absolutely hate me for it. I'm gonna go with Bubble Tea. I'm really sorry for all you Pocky lovers. Bubble Tea, though. My coffee is here. Sharon Ma asks, who's the best dancer out of you? If you've ever come to our concert, um, you know who loves to dance. <laughs> Susan Gleaves, if you could only choose one carb for the rest of your life, uh, would it be rice, noodles, or bread? Dude, ramen. Jason Poo, uh, as someone who has grown up with Epikai, I want to ask you, when did the reality of adulthood first hit you? The reality of adulthood didn't hit me. It, it basically just like uppercut me. A lot of people know what I went through. I used to have like this very ideal uh, perspective on the world, um, like a kid's view of the world. When shit hit the fan for me, um, I quickly realized that the world wasn't as I had seen it. Surabi Lovegood. Oh, you, your last name is amazing. Uh, okay, but how obsessed with bubble tea are you? I told you, I love bubble tea. Laurie Chang asks, what are your top three favorite stories in any medium and why? Dragon Ball, uh, Slam Dunk, and probably Totoro. And why? Um... I mean, Dragon Ball, you collect like these big marbles and you get to bring back people that are gone. I mean, that's a great, that's amazing. And the Dragon Ball characters are like the epitome of like self, self-improvement. Like you think they've already peaked and then their hair gets yellow and pointy. And you think they've peaked again, but it gets more, and then they, they've, they fuse together into becoming like an actual different being. That's the whole storyline. The whole storyline is just these characters just get more and more and more powerful. Slam Dunk, you know, it's just amazing. And what was the last one that I said? Oh, Totoro, my college roommate, my freshman roommate, was deathly afraid of Totoro. Now, I'm not kidding. Like, if... I had like a Totoro doll in my room, he would, it would like trigger him. And I think I, I, I think I like Totoro because of that. Shout out to my freshman year roommate, Stephen Chow, doing amazing things in Silicon Valley. Jail White, how has the dynamic and friendship between you and the other members of Epic High changed or grown throughout the years? Though you guys aren't a K-pop idol group in an industry where, wait, we are a K-pop idol group. If you hear someone cussing crazy, you know, just going crazy in the distance, that's two cuts. He's playing that, you know, that soccer game. Alizi Chang, fold or scrunch your toilet paper? Um, you're, you mean like pre-use, right? I fold it very, like, I fold it like a blanket. You know, I, I fold 
my dad was a very frugal person. Uh, so he, he, uh, he demanded that we only use three sections, three pieces, three pieces at a time. And I was like, Dad, that's impossible. I mean, it's too thin. Helen Luo, what advice would you give yourself if you could go back in time? Well, well I would tell me you're going to have a roller coaster of a life. There are some crazy things that are going to happen to you, and it's going to make you, you know, doubt yourself. It's going to make you hate yourself sometimes. It's going to make you cry. Uh, it's going to hurt you, but you'll get over it. You know, you'll, you'll make it through. So... Don't let, don't let hate make you hate people. Don't let pain make you hurt other people. But knowing me, the past me will probably look at the future me and say, go fuck yourself. Jordan Sang asks, growing up in an immigrant family, were there career expectations for you? Was going to Stanford your choice or something your family wanted? Was your family supportive of the music career path so first question of course there were expectations just the normal you know down-to-earth expectations of Asian parents doctor lawyer professor Nobel Prize laureate yeah it was the same for me going to Stanford your choice or something your family wanted this was this is a it's a tricky question because my parents really wanted me to go to Stanford I wanted to go to NYU Tisch to study film they were very, very outspokenly against that. We fought like crazy. You know, I didn't want to just keep fighting. So I looked, and Stanford had an amazing, uh, it still does, but it has an amazing writing program. Um, there were professors there, um, authors that I loved. I figured that by studying creative writing or literature, I could... Um, write my own screenplays and go into film that way. So the compromise was my choice. Was your family supportive of the music career path? No, they were not. But it didn't really matter to me. Uh, like, I don't do what I do. I don't dream what I dream um, for them. You know, I, I'm very grateful to them. Something that troubles many of us is that our parents made huge sa sacrifices for us, right? Like they clothed us, fed us, educated us, gave up on their dreams sometimes for us. Um, the problem is that we feel like this debt can only be repaid by accomplishing something or becoming something that they want. What I realized when I became Haru's father, like when I became a parent, I fed her, clothed her, um, I make sacrifices for her. I work really hard for her. But I don't expect her to repay this somehow by um, becoming something or by accomplishing something. You know, all she has to do to repay that is, is smile, really. Our parents probably started off the same way. They did many things for us, um, not expecting anything in return except our happiness. And then slowly, you know, they may have forgotten about it. Um, the world and people around them may have, you know, made them forget. Make an effort to show them how happy you are if you can't do what they expect of you. And maybe they'll remember that that's, that's all they wanted from you. This was fun. Uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. There were many, many more questions, most of them about bubble tea. Um, you guys, you guys really love your boba. If you happen to be in Europe or anywhere in North America, um, we have this humongous tour. So you can check out epichai.com for locations. It's going to be a lot of fun. The album's coming out. I hope you love it. Thank you so much. We love you.